This is Robert with Pioneer Smokehouses, and today we're going to do a chuck roast on the Masterbuilt 40 inch um, charcoal smoker. Now, one of the things about the chuck roast is I like to replace it for brisket in a recipe and prepare it exactly the same way. It just takes a little bit less time, and I like it. It comes out similar to the point side for the most part, and you just have to be careful when you're cutting it to make sure that you get across the grain when you actually go to serve it. But it works really well for something like uh, burnt ends, for, you know, poor man's burnt ends or whatever you'd like to call them. So first off, I'll show you the chuck roast here that I picked up. I got a pretty good size piece here. And uh, that is just, uh, that's exactly what I'm going for for size. Um, to start with, I'm going to use a little tray that it came in, and that way I don't have to uh, dirty any extra dishes. So first thing is that I've been using a lot of this uh, Spice Hunter Cowboy Barbecue Rub, and uh, I buy all my stuff so it's not, nothing's provided or anything. Um, when I take the uh, chuck roast, I always do around the edges first. So. I don't know if you'll be able to see this, but I'm going to go ahead and just sprinkle this on here like this. And I'll just roll it. Okay, so I've done all the edges, and now I'm just going to set it down flat back in the container, and I'm going to sprinkle it lightly. So then I'll flip it over. And when I'm doing this, what I'm doing is I'm picking up the spices off the bottom of the tray so I don't waste a lot. A little bit goes on the counter, of course, like this, if you don't use something like a large platter or a cookie sheet to work in. I'm just going to set this down for now. Now, this is my um, pre-mix rub. And everybody, you know, what? you just take a leftover shaker and, and use it. So what's in here is um, 3, 2, 1, 1. So three parts pepper two parts garlic granules, one part salt, one part uh, smoked paprika. So I probably should have started on the sides. Okay, so I've done this one side. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna do this here. I'm going to roll it in there so that way I don't waste a bunch. And then finally this side here. Now the different spices weigh a little bit different so if you don't get it shaken up really good um, it won't come out evenly. Um, it looks like it could use a little bit more pepper. There might be pepper in the bottom of the container. Um, and I don't want to add a bunch more salt, but we're going to see if we can shake a little bit more out here. Now, I want you to get a really good look at that. And feel free to go a lot heavier if you want. Now, I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to set it over here, flip it up, and set it on the back of the cookie sheet. So... You're going to see this here is a grill mat. So let's put just a little bit more of the spice on here of my pre-made spice. And then um, I think that I will uh, put a little bit more pepper on it too, just because, like I said, I think that the salt was at the top of the container and the pepper was on the bottom. So anyway, we are ready, and I don't mind preparing this a little bit ahead of time and leaving it sit on the counter because it is beef. Um, it will take, you know, 30 minutes before the smoker is really ready to go. So I'm just going to leave that like that, and uh, we'll uh, take it out into the smoker in about 30 minutes. And the sun has gotten up early today. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to get started on lighting this uh, Masterbuilt 40-inch digital charcoal smoker. And... Uh, First thing is, is that uh, today we're going to do a uh, chuck roast and I prepare it the same way as I prepare my brisket. 
So basically, if you follow any basic brisket directions, it'll work the same way and it cooks much like the point. Also, you can chop it up real easily and turn it into something like burnt ends if you just continue to cook it after it's uh, completed its first cooking step. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to light this, but I'm going to just cut through it pretty quick. Two lighters. All right, and I'll go ahead and fill that and then I'll be right back. Okay, so I've done the base layer of the um, charcoal basket and I'm gonna take a picture and show you here. And if you look at that basket, I put a layer of, of uh, wood chips across the, or there, I guess they're considered, it's the leftovers from a bag of chunks, but those are the small pieces. I put the chunks in with the uh, gravity feed and this works really good to spread out a little bit of wood and you can put some right in if you look in the center with the divider there. Um, but we're not gonna do that. I'm just gonna add more of this to the top. Now I put in a few of the, a few of the match lights across the end there with the lighters. And the reason I did that is because I want them to get a good start. So you just take this, couple of these, and you can't load your whole basket with match light or the whole thing will go up all at once and that probably start a fire. But I'm just putting them right in the corner. Yeah, let's just drop it in the water. That's always a good idea. And then we want to make sure, because I dropped a few charcoal in the middle, when I, uh, a few briquettes in the middle when I did that. So we want to make sure not to leave any inside the basket and uh, I'll take a little picture here so you'll see that. Sun is shining crossways, so hopefully that picture turns out good. So we'll pop that right up there. And you see in the little divider that there is just a lot of charcoal just sitting down in there. And that's just when I dumped the bag in there, I missed. No big deal. So I'm going to get this started. So we've got our little brulee torch. And then I'm just going to light those haystacks. I put two of them in there. And the directions call for two lighters. Um, I used the blocks in the beginning, which I used for the gravity feed, which worked pretty well. Um, but they don't work as well for this. And, uh, but the haystacks seem to work really good. I still have a little bit more apple chips. I'll go ahead and just spread those around there a little bit. You don't want to put a large bunch in there or else they will light up. All right. So I'm going to go ahead, now that I got this lit, before it gets hot, I'm going to put it in there. So I went ahead and put it in there and I set it on the lowest setting and I want to make sure that I remember to flip this over. When you're using it on the lowest setting, you need to put this upside down over the opening to reduce the airflow and it's getting warm already. So we're just going to let this run for about uh, 20 minutes and uh, see if it comes up to temperature. We will check on it after 10 minutes, 
because if it doesn't come up to temperature fast enough, the safety will turn it off. All right, we'll see you then. Okay, so it's had plenty of time to go ahead and warm up and we took care of the meat and it's ready to go. So the next thing we're gonna do is I'm gonna use a smoke tube because I wanna start off getting a little bit more um, smoke in this. And so we'll start that right now um, and then it'll uh, light up and kick in. Now, it is a little windy today, so I'm gonna turn my back here. Uh, see if we can get this going. So I filled the smoke tube two thirds of the way in, which is uh, more than it has to be filled, but I can't really light it if I don't get it down that far. Now, maybe with a stick lighter, you'd be able to light it. Um, something that I have been doing is I've been using haystacks to light these. And uh, if you start ahead of time and you stuff a haystack in there, or as I like to do, I like to try to get about a uh, half of one or some, uh, shreds off of one because it, even this, the scraps light really well. Then what will happen is you'll be able to get this thing lit while you're uh, off doing something else like seasoning your food or something. Now we're getting a good light and I think that that's because the wind is actually working in our favor. So I'm not sure if you can see that, but I'm gonna go ahead and pull it up a little closer. So now I'm just gonna set this in the back of the smoker And the modification that we made, put an air vent in the back. Then I'm gonna go ahead and take this and it's on the grill mat and I'm just gonna slide it right on in. And there you go. So we'll go ahead and come back in about two hours. All right, well, we were going along great and a bunch of clouds rolled in and pretty much got dumped on. So anyway, um, we're gonna take a look at this and see how she's doing. Uh, it's been a little over two hours, uh, actually pretty close to three. Oh, and she looks great. I'm gonna, you know what? I'm actually gonna pull that out and give you a real nice close up look there. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna flip that over. Not absolutely necessary, it's cooking pretty well. Then I'm just gonna pop it in here and I'm not gonna push it back all the way. And the reason is, is because we're gonna plug this in. So there's a little hole right here on the side. We're gonna slide it through. We're gonna take and put it in in one of the largest, thickest spots. Right about there, and then slide that to the finished location and close the door. I moved the temperature up just a little bit uh, to 250, just because it was the blower wasn't run running continuously. So now, I'm just gonna go ahead and plug this in in one of the plugs. I usually use the bottom one just for convenience. And then I'm just going to hang this off the edge just a little bit, just to kind of get a little bit of uh, protection from the rain. And uh, I moved the pellet smoker tube to the back to where the input is because it wasn't getting enough oxygen to stay lit on the inside. So um, we'll be back in a few hours, probably. I'm probably going to shoot for another three before we uh, take a look there. And um, I'm gonna open this up and see if you can see it real quick. And we're burning all the way into the corner, so we've got plenty of charcoal to complete this cook. All right, here we are back in the rain. And uh, what I'm gonna do here is, uh, first I just checked the temperature and it's just under 150. So it's time to wrap and roll. All right, so I'm gonna take this out real carefully. So 
Nice thing about the grill mats is even when it's hot, you can just grab onto it like that. And the grill mat's usually not an issue. I have a pretty low sensitivity in my hands. So for me, I don't even feel it. So now I'm gonna take the whole mat and I'm just gonna flip this out on a piece of tinfoil here. And then I'm gonna set the grill mat back in here. And I'm just gonna fold it up real quick before the rain gets it. It doesn't necessarily have to be really tight. So it just has to be sealed well. So when I seal the ends, what I like to do is I like to fold it once, just a little bit, and then fold it a second time, just a little bit. So I went over and it's a double layered here, and then this double fold will kind of keep it all together, and then I just pull it apart just a little bit, so that way this stays down. The idea is to keep all the moisture inside. Then we'll go ahead and just set that back in here. And if you don't set it on the grill mat, uh, cheap foil tends to get stuck to the grates and then when you move it around it just rips up and it defeats the whole purpose of uh, defeats the whole purpose of wrapping it up if you rip the grates apart so I'm gonna move this over here a little bit and it's been providing just a little bit of protection for the rain which I know it's stupid I should have a, a cover and everything but we know what happened to the cover thank you snow um, anyway, so um, we're going to let it roll for about, I'm going to say just a little over three hours and it should be fall apart good. I am going to go ahead and take this opportunity to raise the temperature. We're going from, first I started at 225, then I bumped it to 250 because I just wasn't happy with the heat. And now I'm going to bump it up to 275. I want to see it above 275. So I'll check it in about 30 minutes. And as long as it's above 275, I'll be happy. If not, I'll bump it up another 10 degrees because if it's under 275, it, I just won't get the results I want. And it's the same when I do my brisket, except this is going to be a total of a maximum of nine hours, probably closer to eight. Um, but with the brisket, it's probably 12 to 14 hours, depending on the size. So anyway, see you back in a second. Well, we're back and uh, we're just about done here. So first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna check the temperature. And the internal temperature is over 200 degrees in the, um, in the ro uh, chuck roast here. And we'll go ahead and open it up. The charcoal is just about out. We are not able to hold temperature to what I set it to. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull this out. And first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and remove this. And I'm just gonna set it in here on the top shelf for now. When I close the door, I'm sure that it's just gonna fall right down. And then I will take the cookie sheet and slide this right up on the back of it. So just like that, ta-da. Now, Go ahead and close that. And we'll leave that on and let that run. I'm going to turn it up to full speed. And I doubt that it'll actually um, get anywhere near that, but the extra air will get what charcoal is left uh, cleared and going at full power. So, first thing I'm going to do is I'm gonna go ahead and move the table over here a little bit. And then uh, that way as I go, I'll be able to show you what I'm doing. All right, so I went ahead and brought this over here to the table, and then I'm just gonna go ahead and unfold it. I'm gonna lift this up here so you can see it. And I've got it in the foil here, and I'm not sure if you can see this right here, but there is Oh, yummy. There is definitely juice there from the, um, from the roast. And so if you were gonna make a gravy, that would be a little bit to go with your, um, 
with a gravy packet or if you had something else for a starter like some beef stock. So I'm just going to go ahead and I brought a knife with me because, well, I always sample the food. So I just cut a little corner off, which is pretty well done, and I'm just going to pull this apart. And I just want you to see how it comes apart. That comes apart just like a brisket would. Completely broke down. And oh my gosh, that's good. I don't know, I, it's arguable for me. Um, this is the right size for what I need and it's pretty easy to cook. So, um, chuck roast, cook just the same as brisket. You're just probably gonna take about 25% of your time off for a regular size chuck roast. And in, the Masterbuilt 40 inch charcoal smoker, but you could probably do this in just about anything. I have done the same recipe in the gravity feed and I've done some roasts in the electric also. Um, it's hard to get a smoke ring like this in an electric smoker. And I'm gonna show that to you real quick here. And uh, I will take a couple of pictures and pop them up, but look at that ring. That is just perfect. So, hey, Thanks for watching. If you like anything you've seen on the video, there's affiliate links down in the description below. Um, so especially the grill mats or the uh, pellet smoker tubes and my favorite, which of course is the tray. And check out the videos before and see some of the modifications. Um, this thing so far so good. The taste is really good and I'm interested to see uh, larger production like um, salmon or something like that where I need to use a lot of trays because for this situation I'm only using one shelf and uh, coming up in the near future we're going to be doing uh, some turkey legs so uh, one of the people in one of the groups that I'm on uh, asked about smoking turkey legs like this and we're going to do it so Thanks again for watching, and if you haven't hit the subscribe button, please do.